I was in his very first ever movie called Kronos back in 1992, 93, something like that. Um, it was my first ever, um, it was his first film. It was my first indie film where, you know, you, you're working completely outside of a, of a real infrastructure. It's money that was cobbled together by private sources and then it's him surrounding himself with all of his favorite people in his community that he's worked with on little other objects. Now they're going to be there to build a world for Guillermo to function and protect him from the outside world and let him make his movie. That's how I, that was my first experience of working with him. Um, I think the fact that I'm playing Hannibal Chow um, seemed like an afterthought because uh, almost everything else had been resolved with regard to Charlie was hired months and months earlier, as was Rinko, as was Charlie Day and stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, the conversation sort of came to pass as they were getting ready to actually start filming the movie that I should take a look at this character of Hannibal Chow. Um, leads me to believe that that they had come to that decision through a circuitous um, um, network of labyrinthian strangeness, if that's even a sentence, and it, and it is now. I didn't have to do anything. I just sat in a chair, like like I usually do. You know, I'm, 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 I'm witty and effusive and, and personable while, you know, some other guy is, is you know, you know, like the bricklayer is, uh, you know, building this thing. Um, the, 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 the makeup artists that I've come to work with in the course of my career because of Guillermo, um, uh, it's now become a thing like, you know, okay, how are we going to mess Ron's face up that no one's ever seen before? This time it's going to be even better than ever, you know? And um, these guys in, in Canada where we shot Pacific Rim um, gleefully transformed me into the scarred, marred Hannibal Chow. Uh, he was big fun to play. I actually thought that I was going to be pulled over by a cop for overacting and be given a ticket or, or else sent to the slammer. Well, you don't get a sense that it's huge because, you know, actual filmmaking itself is a rather intimate thing, you know, um, because people are accessing their own internal, you know, clocks and experience, set of experiences. There's, a, there's an intimacy about shooting a film. I mean, you, 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 know, you know when you're making a, 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 a huge tentpole studio film and you know when you're making a small little indie. Um, but the, the physical um, act of executing what it is that you do doesn't really change from, from, from one set of circumstances to another. You're just, your, your, your job is to find the reality of the character that you've been asked to play. And um, it's, it's, it's very personal, very personal work. So the, the, there's a cocoon that needs to be um, built for the artist to feel free enough to, 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 to get a little, a little naked. 